Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and welcome back to the International Zine Month series I've been doing. And we are just about wrapping up here, I'd say. Just a few days left. This is my last big uh, compilation video, I guess. Uh, my room is a mess, and my neighbors are playing the drums downstairs. But I have kind of been putting off filming this for a while, and I kept thinking, like, oh, I'll do a compilation of four days that I've missed, and oh, I'll do a compilation of this many days, and now I'm like, okay, I seriously gotta film this and put it out there. So, we're just gonna go. <laughs> Where we last left off was day 22, and the uh, official prompt for that is check out YouTube channels about zines. So congratulations, you're done. <laughs> You've already done that. Um... If you'd like to check out some more YouTube channels about zines, then I have a few to highlight. First is Silver Nix, which is the channel of Nix from Sea Green Zines, and there are a bunch of Happy Mail Mondays where Nix opens up all of the envelopes and zines that arrived in the last uh, week, and so that's always really fun, and I've submitted some zines and been uh, you know, appeared, sort of. My zines have appeared on a Happy Mail Monday, so I will link that video somewhere. And there's also some episodes. It doesn't seem like it's going right now, but it is a podcast series from a couple years ago that Nix produced called uh, Zine Collector. And by the way, <laughs> to Nix and anyone else who's watching this, sorry, I... I actually hadn't seen that series before I titled my just showing off my zine collection zine collector also, so I hope that's not going to be screwing everything up and I am sorry for stealing your title. <laughs> Accidentally. Um, I actually called it that because in the tarot community people have tarot collector um, and tarot collection videos, so whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, Really great channel, really fun. Another channel is Feral Publication, which um, also features Happy Mail or, you know, zines. I think it's called Zines from the Underground is the official series title, and it's basically, you know, opening mail and unboxing and showing off all the zines that have arrived. And there are also some videos on zine topics and on being a creator and being an artist and... Um, yeah, so really good, and a very active channel. Both of these channels so far have been very active, and I'm doing my best to highlight active channels. <laughs> Next up is one called Tiny Rat Magic, and this is a really fun little channel. It doesn't have as much zine stuff. There are some older zine hauls, and I think some zine make-along kind of things. Um, it's sort of like an art vlog channel, but it's really fun and it's really cute and lighthearted and just a pleasure to watch. Next there's Ian Halliday of the East Village Inky, which is a zine publication, and there are a few update videos from the East Village Inky and some make-alongs and also I think some uh, lectures and like uh, read-alouds and things from various projects. So all really good stuff. <laughs> Check that out. I'm sorry, I'm starting to get all these <laughs> mixed up, so, you know, you can you can verify whether my descriptions of these videos are correct just by going to the channels. <laughs> it's been a long month. <laughs> and finally, uh, a fellow newcomer to Zine YouTube is uh, Dana at Cat Moth Crow, which uh, Dana, they do reviews of zines and, uh, so far have a couple videos and more in the works of, um, basically showing off and reviewing zines. And <laughs> it's really great. I sent in my zines to be reviewed. I think I was going to talk about that later. That's another, uh, prompt. But <laughs> anyway, sneak peek, uh... Dana at Cat Moth Crow, another really great zine YouTuber. Besides that, uh, if you are looking for other zine content, and especially more about making or more uh, presentation types or more zine theory, <laughs> that sort of thing, then a lot of zine festivals 
have archives of their presentations on YouTube as videos now. Um, so you can, you can check some of those out. And basically if you ever see a video on zines, just go to the channel and see if they make more. <laughs> and that has so far been my method for trying to find <laughs> more zine related videos. Frankly, I mean, I said this when I started the channel, half of the reason that I wanted to start the channel, um, and do a lot of stuff with zines along with tarot, I wanted to do tarot because I wanted to join in the cool tarot tube community. And I wanted to start my channel for zines and do stuff with zines because I feel like there are just not enough zine YouTube content creators. And I want to build a stronger, more visible community of, uh, zine video people on YouTube. <laughs> and so I'm throwing my hat into the ring and now I'm completely obsessed and I, and I really love it. I have a whole bunch of videos that, uh, you know, video ideas and videos in progress. And I have a few videos queued for after International Zine Month. So, you know, I'm all on board. The free zine for today is by Nyx of uh, Sea Green Zines, who was the first one on this list. And this is their Perzine uh, Don't Call Me Cupcake, number one. And this is a really unique free zine and a really cool one because it is an audio zine. So this is a read aloud of the zine Don't Call Me Cupcake, number one, which is a pretty, it's been pretty long running, I think, um, that Nyx did reading aloud the zine. And it's it's really cool. It's, it's a it's a zine audiobook. I love it. So I'll go ahead and link that below. And of course that fits very well because it is made by a fellow zine YouTuber. Okay. Day 23. The official prompt is check out a zine distro you have never ordered from before. So I for this one came across um I don't totally remember. Nina, it was probably from something that you posted. <laughs> um, I came across this uh, zine distro called Small Zine Volcano, and uh, they have this really cool pack where basically it's a it's a pack of zines for, I think they have a few different levels. So you can, there's like $10 and $25 or, or something like that, where basically you just pay $25 and then they will cram as many zines as they can fit into <laughs> that envelope, including shipping, like anything, however much you can get for $25 including shipping, that's how many zines that they'll send you. And so I am really excited and um, I am going to be happily surprised when that arrives. I can't remember where they're based. It's either the UK or Australia. I And I realize those are two very far away, pla you know, places that are very far apart from each other. So I apologize for that. Um, but either way, because the $25 includes shipping, then you don't have to worry about it. Like you'd get, you would still get fewer zines, you know, if you lived in the U S than if you lived in their home country, just because the shipping cost is going to be higher, but you have a set price and you don't have to worry about adding a whole bunch of zines to your cart and then realizing, Oh shit, this stuff is going to cost me like $50 to mail out. Um, so anyway, small, what did I just say it was? Small Zine Volcano. <laughs> it's been a long month, you guys. I'm serious. Uh, small Zine Volcano really cool little distro and I'm very excited for that. And the free zine for today is the Translash Zine Pride Month edition. And Translash is a big zine of trans stories and trans experiences that are, uh, it's uh, put together by Translash, the organization, and it couples with the uh, POC zine project, uh, which I suppose you'd call, they're kind of a distro, I guess, or a library, because they have their zines available for free to read online. And so this particular one of Translash um, is also available for free online. And um, so that, anyway, that's why I picked it for this particular prompt is because I feel like it's sort of distro adjacent. <laughs> Sometimes coming up with zines that fit these prompts is a little hard. And I probably made everything like way harder on myself by trying to theme the free zine to the subject, but it did, 
it did force me to expand my horizons a little bit and to really go digging and looking. And so I found a lot of zines and a lot of resources that I never would have otherwise. So, you know, I guess it was worth it. <laughs> anyway, so this is a really good zine and it is uh, submission based. So it's a, it's a collaborative effort by people who have submitted to the zine. Um, and it just has a very diverse selection of articles. A couple articles are trans agenda for liberation. <laughs> so you want the trans agenda. That's what it is. Trans liberation. Um, there's seven transgender and non-binary video gamers to support. There are some podcasts. There is embracing your sexiness as a trans person and just a lot of really great little articles. And this is like a really professional looking zine. It's very, uh, it's, it's magazine like, uh, so it's really good. There's also the, uh, previous issue of Trans Slash is also available for free, and that was the Holiday Survival Guide issue. So I realize that we're in July right now, but never too early, I guess, to start <laughs> planning for that sort of thing. Okay, day 24. The official prompt is, teach yourself a new zine skill. And for this one, I played around with a very fun, interesting little piece of software, uh, it's freeware, called the Electric Zine Maker. So this is a really cool little tool, and basically it is like an all-inclusive zine creation studio kind of thing, where uh, what you do is you select your layout that you eventually want to print on from the options, and they have a variety of mini zine layout options uh, with different page numbers of different sizes, and um, it's already all laid out, and so then you select one, and then you can create each page all within there. There's text, there's photo editing and photo manipulation, and a whole bunch of really cool photo filters and um, that sort of stuff. There's drawing tools, there's stamps, there's, you know, you can import any image that you want if you you know, just purely want to do your zine traditionally, you could even just take a picture of each of your individual pages and then upload them here so, and format them so that you it makes it for easier printing. I mean, there, there are so many things that this tool can do, and I basically spent the entire time that I was playing with it just goofing around with all the filters, which was so fun, and I haven't had that much fun with the digital art program since basically when I started learning Photoshop when I was in middle school and just playing with all of these, playing with all these filters and all these options was really fun. So I ended up just making like a crappy little <laughs> intro um, page that is for a zine that, as you can guess from this title, will probably never get finished because I didn't have any plans beyond just that. <laughs> but it was really fun and I, you know, at some point in the future I'd really like to be able to make a digital mini zine with this uh, project. And you can make it digital and print it digitally or you can print it traditionally. And anyway, I just really, really like it. The Electric Zine Maker is downloadable for free from Ichito and you should just absolutely check it out. <laughs> For the freezing for this category, I have two little things to talk about. One is a uh, freezing called EZM Reader by Jeremy Oduber, and basically it is a tutorial for how to make your EZM zine readable online in a flippable format, and it's really cool. Where if you, um, you can see what it looks like just by looking at this scene. Basically, you will be able to upload it on Ichito and click the pages and it will, you know, have an animation, basically, of the page flipping. And it is really cool and, you know, it's <laughs> maybe such a small thing, but it's something that I sort of miss when I'm reading digital zines is, you know, I miss being able to hold it in my hands and I, I miss being able to turn the pages. And so although I'll never really be able to hold it in my hands, I think that this just provides such a nice little experience and it makes the digital platform so much more fun and so, more, so, so much more exciting. Um, and how to do it is all available in this scene. <laughs> the next thing that I want to talk about is that there is an entire category 
uh, or a whole, a whole collection of zines on Ichito that are zines made by the electric zine maker. And not all of them are free, but the vast majority of them are. So basically, I'm just going to link to this really big collection. Uh, it's titled Made with the Electric Zine Maker, and you can click through and pick out a zine that you like and read it just online on your you know, just on the screen, or you can download it and read it as a PDF. Um, and quite a few of them are also uh, clickable, so you can click and, you know, the pages will turn. So this is really cool. And if you feel called to make a zine with the Electric Zine Maker, you can contact the uh, creator of the Electric Zine Maker, who will add your zine to that big mega made by EZM collection. Day 25 is... Send your zine for review to a website or magazine that does reviews. And uh, the aforementioned Dana of <laughs> Cat Moth Crow actually commented on one of my videos, and I noticed that they do reviews. And so I sent my zines over, and, and there you go. So they're in the process of being reviewed, probably. Or they're probably still in the mail, but whatever. <laughs> so if you want to submit your zine to Cat Moth Crow, I highly recommend it and they might feature it in a YouTube video, but they also have a zine blog with zine reviews, and they have a highly popular Instagram called Zine Reviews, um, who I think Zine Reviews was originally run by somebody else. I don't have a, an Instagram, or I, like, I have one, but I don't really use Instagram. Um, so I think it was run by someone else, but now Dana has been handed the keys and is doing a really great job with it. So you, it is a really great way to get your zine out there, and it's totally free. A word of caution, I am always very hesitant about any sort of magazine or anything where you have to pay some sort of fee for them to review your zine. Um, I feel like that is very not in the spirit of zines, and it just generally doesn't seem cool. So there are plenty of people who do free zine reviews, and, you know, you're giving away your zine for free, so that's enough of a payment, honestly. Um, <laughs> like, you should not have to pay any more than that. And one of these people is Dana, and you should totally send your zine to them. Um, if you want me to review your zine, then you can contact me. I don't really do a lot of zine reviews, um, or at least I haven't really yet, just because, I don't know, why haven't I done that? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe I'll get started. So if you want to send me your zine for review or trade, I, I love trades. If you want to send me your zine and I will, I will review it and I will be more than happy to send you one of my zines in return. The free zine for today is... Birkin Socks by Elizabeth Lovett, and this is one of those zines that was made by the Electric Zine Maker. And I admit that this one is a stretch as far as being thematically appropriate, but it's just too cute and too fun not to include. Basically, it is a uh, review slash, you know, list of all the things that Elizabeth loves about Birkin so like wearing socks with Birkenstock sandals. Um, and put them all together as a way to try and convince her girlfriend to, um, be on board <laughs> with the, with the Birkensocks look. And I'm so into that. And I have to tell this little story where, uh, one time I was in middle school and we had like a student cafe and it was really awesome, actually. It was called Happy Mocha. And, uh, what you did is you went up and, um you know, just ordered at a table, and then you could go and sit at the desks in the area, and they would bring it to you, just like, you know, a regular cafe. And so there's always a really big line, because it was once a week, and it was during a very short lunch hour. Um, so I'm waiting in the line, and I get up to the front, and uh, whatever student who was much older than I was, I was at a K-12 through school, and I was in eighth grade, I want to say, and the um, the other student was, like, a senior or something, and he looked down at my shoes, 
And, of course, I'm wearing socks with sandals. And they weren't exactly Birkenstocks, but they might as well have been. He looked down, and he looked up at me, and he's like, Socks with sandals, huh? At this point in my life, I had no idea what that meant. Like, <laughs> why that was a big deal. Because I was young and naive and had no idea that it would even... That it was considered tacky or whatever. And so I was just like, yeah. You know, completely confidently, just like, yeah. Socks and sandals. And he's like, that's cool. You want a free cinnamon roll? <laughs> so, um, that's my contribution to the socks with sandals um, uh, zine. I suppose my response to it is that another thing to add is that socks with sandals can sometimes get you free pastries by like-minded, cool seniors. <laughs> okay, day 26 is... Uh, organize your zine collection, post a shelfie online. Um, yeah, I have been sort of trying to organize my zine collection for a while now, and I have gone through a few iterations, and I'm just like, I've just kind of given up at this point. Basically, I just have them in different shoe boxes and various boxes that I've got at different times, and, um, you know what, here, let me just... Let's see if I can just turn... How how can I do this? You get to see more of my room. Fun. Okay. Well, uh, here... This is my zine box of my own zines, uh, like my tarot zines. Um, some of them. And I have them just organized with pieces of cardboard in between so that when someone orders them, I can just, like, quickly run in and grab them. And it has also become home to my Overflow mini-zines, which, um, yeah, so I gotta work on that. <laughs> this box here is the box, is the full of zines that I have gotten just this month. I mean, it's not full full, but it's more full than you'd think. This is the zines that I have gotten this month, and I'm holding them separately right now because I'm going to be making a video wrap-up thing at the end of the month, showing off all these zines. Um, here, I have a random pile of zines that should go other places, but I haven't bothered, and so most of, like, when people order them, I've just kind of been grabbing them from this pile. Um, and underneath, I've got some bookmarks and other stuff that I usually include. Now, usually the shelf is a lot more full, and I have it stacked with a few different boxes. I I don't know why I, why I don't have that right now. Um, but right now, I just have a lot of zines stacked up on the floor <laughs> right here. So I've got some more of my zines, which are on top of a stack of paper, which are on top of a box of zines that I have already done, I've already showed off in my um, uh, zine collector series, right? And then below that is the box of all the stuff that I have not shown off yet. I don't know if you can see it very well, but trust me, there's a box down here. It's just like a big old shoe box that I got my demonia boots in. <laughs> and so that's that's all the zines that I have not yet shown off that are loosely arranged by category <laughs> right now. Um, in here, I've got... What is it? Oh, this is my zine trade box that has a whole bunch of other stuff on top of it right now, including you get a sneak peek of my new fanzine for They Might Be Giants. Hint, hint. Um, and let's see. I guess that's mostly it. <laughs> so, oh, oh, right. And then I've got a bunch of boxes up here of more zines that are either mine or other people's that I just have not organized. So yeah, I really probably could have used this one, but you know what? I'm going to wait until after International Zine Month is over officially to um, to really organize because, you know, I'm still getting a whole bunch of zines in that I've been ordering from this month. I've ordered more zines this month than I probably ever before. I've, I've probably doubled my collection. <laughs> and um, I just, you know, I, I, uh, it's, it's too much right now and I'm, I'm filming all these videos. And so when I'm done filming a good chunk of these videos and when I'm done with International Zine Month, I will go through, I will organize them and we'll do a more proper, uh, bookshelf 
tour um, of my zines. But basically, I just have them in a bunch of shoe boxes. I don't really like the magazine boxes that sit upright. I know a lot of people use them and they're fine. I don't like them just because I get super paranoid about the bottoms of the zines sort of fraying out or if I am, you know, sliding them in there just not really I just I just I just freak out about it and I'm just so worried about the zines getting damaged because they're so you know just because it's paper without without a cover and so anyway so I, I like to keep all my scenes flat and so that's why I have them in these big shoe boxes just so I can stack them up and lay them flat so there you go that's my uh my zine organization strategy strategy <laughs> and the free zine that I have is one that I am very happy to have in my collection and that I um I'm actually planning on printing so that I can have a physical copy in my collection just in case anything ever happens to the digital file. And this one is Pretty Girl Looks So Tough. And I found this on the Queer Zine Archive Project. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to link to it directly because YouTube, for some reason, that seems to think that QZAP is porn site. So... I have a warning on my channel already for that, and I, um, I've tried to talk to, you know, I've, I've sent in an appeal or, or whatever. I don't want to deal with that. So, for now, I am just, um, I'll just, just look up the Queer Zine Archive project and, um, look for Pretty Girl Looks So Tough in the, uh, search box. And I promise you it will be worth it. It will be worth this extra effort. It is such a nice little zine. It is a very tall one, which I always kind of like when they're uh, eight and a half by 11 folded this way. What's that called? Mountain style? There's like mountain and valley. I always called it hamburger hot dog. So this is a hot dog style. So the scene, it's basically about this experience of being femme and um, it talks sort of about self-image and self-care rituals and sort of the uh, one thing that sort of stood out to me was this this dissonance, I guess, of being a radical progressive person and like a progressive feminist who does not think that, you know, who, who wants to dismantle gender stereotypes and still being the sort of person who just for personal enjoyment likes shaving legs occasionally and, you know, doing things that are, or like, you know, participating in beauty standards that are on the whole um, damaging. <laughs> Pretty Girl Looks So Tough. Check that out at the Queer Zine Archive Project. Okay, day 27, second to last for this video, is ask a zine friend if they would like to do a split zine or collaboration. I am very excited that I am going to be doing a collaborative zine on identity. Um, I, if, the, if my zine partner would like to identify themselves, then they may do so in the comments or not. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really excited. And... I am also always open to collaborations and split zines, so if you ever want to do one, then totally hit me up. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's really fun to be able to collaborate on something with someone else, and I feel like it sort of strengthens the zine community. <laughs> and for this one, the free zine is Let's Make a Zine by Olivia Montoya. Uh, who is participating in the Queer Zest Zine Fest, um, which is coming up very soon. And that, it, this is a, a, a zine that Olivia put together for classes and for presentations on it. And I think it's from like 2014 that's been updated or amended a couple times. Um, but it's really good. And it is a very encouraging zine for you to start making your own and um 
one thing I like about it is it doesn't feel like it sticks too much to the basics, but it also doesn't ignore them. That's always a really tricky line to walk of how much are you going to, par to you know, make your, to tailor your information for a beginner audience and how much for people who are already experts on it and kind of trying to find a good middle ground. Um, and I think that this zine does find a good middle ground. It makes it feel accessible and makes it feel like anyone can do it. So do it. <laughs> and the last one here is day 28, post online about your favorite zines. Okay, so I have sort of something special planned for the next prompt, which is very similar, and the next prompt is about photos of you with your zine or zine collection, and I just sort of have an idea for that. So I'm not going to get too much into it right now. What I want to highlight is a newcomer to my favorites you know, this zine definitely spoke to me collection, which also is the free zine for today. And that is Hard Femme Bike Tour by Elokin and Pamela. This one is also available on uh, the Queer Zine Archive Project website. Look up Hard Femme Bike Tour. And this zine is just... <laughs> the zine itself is about... Um, a lesbian couple that, uh, or women love women couple, who did this bike tour from South San Francisco down to Monterey Bay and back over five days or something like that, and went camping and whatever, did, did a little bike tour. Um, and just something about the descriptions of how biking made them feel and how it validated their gender just, it just kind of made me less afraid, I guess, to just get into it. And it made me feel less like I needed to already be something. I needed to already be a biker. I needed to already be blank in order to get into this thing. And there are so many things I've had like that. I really want to try to learn how to rollerblade. I think that would be really fun. And, you know, that's another thing where it's just, I never got over that hump, whatever it was. I don't even know what the hump was, but there was one. And this zine totally got me over it for biking. And so pretty much two days after I read the scene and after it really sank in, I went out and I bought my very first adult grown-up bike. And this morning I had my uh, inaugural ride <laughs> where I biked down to the post office and I biked down to the library and I came back and it was so, it was so amazing. And I'm totally a bike person now. And it's just very, very liberating and very exciting. And I just, I owe it all to this zine. So it's definitely one of my favorites. And I highly recommend that you check it out. Even if you are not a biker, I think that it is a, or not biker, that's something else, whatever, a cyclist. <laughs> even if you, even if you are not, that interested in bikes. I think that it is worth a read for the gender thoughts and just for the stories of of camping and riding along along the trail. That's all I have for today and I will see you very soon for probably the last video or last two videos. I, I, I still don't know what I'm doing for <laughs> wrapping everything up and that I should probably figure that out because there's only three days left of International Zine Month. Um, so I'll get on that and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.